Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of So That's How You Do It, where we teach you how to get your marketing to-dos done so that you get noticed and attract more clients. So today we are talking about five reasons why people aren't buying what you sell and what you can do about it. Good topic, right? Any of you guys who want to make more sales should be tuning into this because this is really, really important stuff. So we're going to wait just a couple minutes to let Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and friends let y'all know that we're live. Um, while we are waiting for the rest of you guys to join, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Stephanie Navinskis. I'm the CEO of Sizzle Force Marketing and Sizzle Force Marketing Academy, which is sponsoring this series on So That's How You Do It. We've been in marketing for a long time, 26 years to be exact, right? And so I've got a lot to share with you guys. Just a reminder, depending on which platform you're watching this on, you might find me looking at you straight on or not, depending on which one you're looking at, because I have to look at multiple cameras. So bear with the awkwardness, we'll get through it. As always, uh, we would love to hear your feedback. So please jump in and tell us what you're thinking, what resonates with you, what questions do you have? We are eager to help you guys move your business forward. And based on today's topic, five reasons why people aren't buying what you sell and what you can do about it. We want to help you guys get more of those sales, right? It's a good, good thing. So let's go ahead and dig in and start talking about this amazing topic. So when we see that a marketing campaign is not performing, there are two immediate go-tos that we consider, okay? The first thing is, do you have enough traffic? Do you have enough eyeballs on what you're actually trying to promote? The second thing is, is your marketing message within that campaign resonating with the people who are seeing it on an emotional level? Okay, now, number one, traffic, eyeballs, awareness is a whole other topic. And we will address that another time in, in another training that we do. Today, I want to focus on your marketing messages because there are so many people that miss the boat with this. And I want to help you guys get on the boat and row the boat right to the bank. Okay, so here's what you need to know. People do not buy based on logic. And I know those of you guys that are more, you know, you kind of align yourself as being a logical person as opposed to a creative person. Some of you guys might just kind of be shrinking in your seat right now, right? Because you're like, that's not true. I buy on logic. Well, you think you do. However, there's been so much research proving otherwise. 90% of purchases are based on emotions. And that doesn't matter if you're an engineer who's a super logical thinker usually, or if you're a dancer who's typically a very creative thinker. We all as humans are wired to buy based on our emotions. So it's super important for all of us to consider, well, what are the emotional motivators that actually promote sales? What are they? Well, we're going to uncover those for you right now. If you're just joining us, quick little reminder, if this is your first time watching us live, we're using multiple cameras. So bear with my eyes darting and my head looking at you sometimes, but not all the time, because we're trying to go on multiple platforms. Please go ahead and jump in the chat and leave your comments and all that good stuff, because we absolutely want to hear from you. So I know Simon knows copy is here. Welcome, Simon. I'm glad you're here. Aesthetic Queen is here again. Welcome back. And some Sam Ann is here. And Aesthetic Queen has revealed her identity on Instagram. She is my daughter. She is a marketer in training. So let's talk about 
the five emotional motivators that promote sales. Number one, pride. Okay. Now I don't like this word. I'll be honest with you. I don't like the word pride. It has like negative connotations to me. However, when people feel like something is going to make them look smarter, faster, richer, prettier, etc., they are going to be motivated to buy that product or service. Okay, I want you guys to just think for a minute about why does somebody buy a Mercedes, right? There's a billion cars people could buy, right? There's also tons of different luxury cars people could buy. But there is definitely a big chunk of the luxury car market who buys a Mercedes. And why is that, right? Are they buying it because of the actual engineering of the car? Or are they buying it because of the status that they gain as a result of driving that car? It really is the latter most of the time, right? When you drive a Mercedes, you make a certain kind of statement, right? And if making that statement is important to you, to some of us, that is important. To others, others are kind of repulsed by that being a statement, right? doesn't matter which side of the fence you are. The bottom line is if making a statement about being smarter, faster, richer, prettier, etc. is important to your buyers, you need to make sure that you are addressing that in your messaging. So to sell more, you're going to want to create marketing messages that showcase how your product or service fulfills this desire. Okay, let's talk about number two. Number two, the second emotional motivator is a desire for a better life. So pretty much anybody you talk to is going to tell you something on their wish list, right? While contentment is a wonderful thing, if you have total and complete contentment, you are rare in this world. Most people want a better job. They want to make more money.
oh, we have locations everywhere. And oh, it can be less expensive than staying in a hotel for five nights or whatever, but they're not. They're talking about making memories. They're talking, they're, they're inviting you into the story, which is tapping into that emotional motivator. Okay, number three. The third emotional motivator is a sense of belonging, okay? People are born with an innate desire to be part of something bigger than themselves. Billions of dollars are spent every year by people from all walks of life that are buying into something because it makes them feel like they belong. It could be anything from buying a a place on the field with your local soccer organization so you can play soccer with a bunch of other guys every week and just have that connection with people in your community to joining a high-end mastermind so that you can be around other big thinkers in business. It could be uh, so many different things. I know Russell Brunson um, with Click Funnels has something called the Two Comma Club, and all of his followers really want to be members of the Two Comma Club, right? It's all based on the revenue you generate using their tools. Again, there's a sense of belonging. When you're in the Two Comma Club, you can kind of feel like you may have arrived a little bit, right? You feel like you've arrived, and so they talk a lot about becoming a member of the two comma club and using it as inspiration to sell click funnels now does click funnels in and of itself make you a member of the two comma club absolutely not you got to use the tool the right way and you really got to know what you're doing to make that happen however notice how they talk about it and how they position it so that it attracts people that want that sense of belonging, that want to be part of that club that makes that uh, achievement, right? So another example could be, um, I have a neighbor across the street who has, drives uh, a car and it is like a, an old Fiat kind of thing. I think it's 1960 something, right? Every Sunday, it looks like uh, every Sunday, he goes for a drive. He's a member of this car club. And it's all the other Fiat drivers in San Diego, and they drive all around. And they show off their cars, and they talk about how they love their cars, and they have that connection, right? So a sense of belonging is something that's super important. So if you want to sell more, make sure that your marketing messages are letting people know how when they buy your product or service, they are being they are becoming part of something bigger than themselves they are becoming part of a community of people that do this but you know whether it's uh, you know the community at the local country club they're a member of that or they're a community of like-minded high-level business owners or they're in a community of the two comma club or they're in the community of the fiat driving club people buy when they feel like what you sell gives them an opportunity to belong to something because we all have this innate desire to be part of something bigger than ourselves. Number four, the fourth emotional motivator is a sense of security, okay? If a person feels unsafe and you create authentic marketing messages that showcase the benefits of that fear being obliterated, prepare to be inundated with business, okay? Now, this is one that you gotta be real careful with. You gotta be sensitive with this because you don't wanna, you know, I'm, I'm not a manipulative marketer. That's not the way I do things. I don't think it's necessary to do that, right? And honestly, I think it's kind of wrong. Um, so you, you have to dance around this one carefully, but let me explain how one company is doing it very well right? There's a product called Hum by Verizon. Maybe you guys have heard of it, right? Basically, it's something that you can put in your car and it will sense if your car gets into an accident and it will call 911 for you, right? To get emergency um, personnel there. Now, me as a mom of three teenagers, right? That is something that I'm like, oh, we probably need to get Hum. Because 
when my kids are just learning how to drive and they're out on the road, naturally, I'm a mom, I'm worried, right? I, I want to make sure that they're safe. Um, I want to make sure that, you know, if I'm not going to be with them, that every protection is in place should something horrible happen. So they're marketing to people like me when they show examples of a young driver getting into the car and then driving, getting into an accident. And, you know, you're not seeing the blood and gore and all of that stuff, but you're seeing automatically come contacting 911 and emergency help being sent to the scene so that they can, you know, have the best outcome from an unfortunate situation, right? So HUM does this very well. It is not manipulative in any way. It is tapping into a very real emotional need that a lot of parents have about their young drivers. Now that's only one segment of their market. That's not the only segment they serve, but that was one campaign that they did very, very well. When I, when I first started talking about this one, this fourth emotional motivator security, I stress the word authentic. I don't know if you guys caught that, but I said, if a person feels unsafe and you create authentic marketing messages that showcase the benefits of that fear being obliterated, prepare to be inundated with business. Okay. Authenticity is key here. Okay. Don't create some false sense of fear. Be authentic and talk and, and make sure that your marketing messages are really playing into the things that real people feel and address those things. Um, Marcy just joined us. Hi, Marcy. Welcome. And Steph Cosman just joined us. Hi, Steph. And you wrote, so true. Yes. Amen. So true. Okay. Here's the thing. Nobody ever wants to be left without something that they need, right? Now, if you sell insurance, any kind of insurance, like let's talk about car insurance or, you know, fire insurance for your home, something like that. I live in California. Fires are a big thing around here, right? So fire insurance is something that taps into a very real need of mine. And I have a deep desire to be safer, right? And to have that sense of security, right? Medical care is another thing, you know? I mean, right now, a lot of us, I, well, I can't even remember at this point. I think it's a law that you don't have to have health insurance. Um, but medical care is something that it's really important to tap into this, right? We have something in our company. We offer supplemental benefits to our full-time employees. And those are things like you can get a supplement to your regular insurance that covers cancer or accidents or things like that. Okay. Now, is marketing that by those companies, is that a manipulative or bad thing? Absolutely not. My husband has had cancer three times. It's a real fear of mine. And knowing that there is a company out there that will sell me insurance that will help provide for us financially in the horrific uh, improbability, I'm going to put it that way, that way improbability that something bad might happen, that there's nothing manipulative about that. That's a need that they're meeting and I love it, right? You know, to talking about things that, how nobody wants to be left without something that they need. If 2020 taught us anything, we know that people are very concerned about always having toilet paper, right? So to sell more, you guys need to make sure that your marketing messages reinforce how your products and services provide an extra layer of security. Um, Perfect Party Planners has joined. Welcome. I'm glad you guys are here. I know we've been um, following each other on Instagram for a bit, so I'm super glad you guys are here. So um, let's jump into the fifth emotional motivator, and that is the fear of missing out, or FOMO, if you like to call it for short right? Nobody wants to miss out on anything, right? We're all wired as humans to really not like it when we're feeling FOMO, okay? So it doesn't matter if you're trying to buy an airline ticket for a trip that you're going to take to Costa Rica, or you are trying to uh, attend an event. You want to, um, whether it's 
you know, a virtual event or a live event, it doesn't really matter, right? Nobody wants to miss something that they want to do. So when you show your ideal clients that your product or service is going to help them obliterate their FOMO, you are on the brink of something magnificent. So one way for you guys to sell more playing off of FOMO is to add a countdown timer, right? Add a countdown timer, let people know there's only so much more time that they can get this deal. A lot of airlines you might notice if you go to book a trip where it'll say something like only three seats left at this price, right? They're playing into the FOMO, okay? Um, if you do live trainings similar to what we're doing or you do webinars of any kind, right? Let people know you're not going to be recording it. So they have to show up live if they want to get the information. That is all playing into FOMO. So play with that. So let me review with you guys. For those of you that jumped in just a wee bit late, let me, um, and those of you that have been on the whole time, let's just soak in this for a minute. Okay. There's five emotional motivators that make people want to buy what you sell. Are you trying to get all five into every marketing message? No, you are not, right? That is, um, it's not even going to be applicable in some cases to what you sell, right? So don't, don't worry if you're like, oh, I don't have anything that, that falls under that category. That's okay. Let it go. You really, you need one, you need one thing. Okay, so let me review. The first of the five emotional motivators that make people buy is pride. So if you want to sell more, you're going to create marketing messages that showcase how your product or service will fulfill their desire to look smarter or be smarter, faster, better, prettier, whatever it looks like. The second one is a desire for a better life okay so to sell more you're going to want to paint positive mental pictures that showcase the positive transformation people experience when they buy your product or service okay what's the good thing that happens to them as a result of doing that number three a sense of belonging okay everybody is born wanting to belong to something so to sell more stuff, you're going to make sure that your marketing messages shows them that they could be part of something bigger than themselves by buying what you sell. Okay. The fourth one, if a person feels unsafe, you need to give them a sense of security. You want to play into that, right? We talked about how nobody needs to be, wants to be left with something that, without something that they need. So to sell more, your marketing messages need to reinforce how your products or services will provide an extra layer of security, making them feel safe. And finally, the fifth one, FOMO, right? If you want to sell more, you're going to play into FOMO by adding a countdown timer to the things that you sell, saying that you only have X amount left if it's an actual product or even a service, right? If you have a, you know, we're gonna be launching a new service on the agency side of our company soon. And we've only got six spots that we're making available between now and the end of the year for this, right? And one of them actually sold out yesterday. And I think the other, another one is gonna sell out today, which means we're only gonna have four spots and we haven't even told the whole world about it yet, right? They're gonna go real fast. I am going to tell people, look, we only have four spots left because it's absolutely true and it's going to get people off the fence and get them to sign up and we're all going to be better for it because they're going to get results faster and we're going to get the business growth that we're looking for. Okay, let people know if you do webinars that it's not going to be recorded or let them know that the recording is only going to be available for 48 hours or something like that play into the FOMO with the way you do your messaging. Okay, so um, those are the five emotional motivators that make people want to buy. And you guys really need to think about it when you're when you look at your marketing messages. Which one are you tapping into? If you look at your marketing messages and you're like, gosh, we're not tapping into any of those. That's probably one of the problems, right? You have to tap into that stuff. 
right? That is what makes people buy. 90% of purchases are based on emotions. So don't even question it because it's true. The research is done, right? We know this is indeed a fact. Now you just have to apply it. If you choose not to touch on the emotional stuff, you will never sell as much as you could, right? So it's a smart move to look into this. You guys, I want to invite you to something for free that you're going to absolutely love. I would like for you right now to pull out your phone or your, you know, Apple calendar or Google calendar, whatever you use, right? And mark off the dates October 25th through the 29th because we are going to be running the Small Business Marketing Challenge again. We have done this two other times and we get raving reviews when we do this. People absolutely love it. Okay, the Small Business Marketing Challenge, again, absolutely free, but it is a five day challenge where we spend one hour every day for five days together. And then I give you a homework assignment that's gonna help you make immediate progress with your marketing, immediate, okay? I'm not talking about, I'm just gonna give you more ideas that you can think about for the rest of your life and never racked on. I'm gonna give you stuff that you can take immediate action on to immediately start to experience some wins and some growth, okay? During the five-day challenge, here's what we're, we're gonna teach you. Number one, we're gonna help you develop a plan to increase brand awareness, right? Brand awareness, is a marketing term. If you're not super familiar with it, basically it's making sure people know that your company and your solution exists. So we're going to develop a plan for you to do that. Number two, we are going to teach you how to attract oodles of qualified leads using one of the most powerful free marketing tools. Did I say free? It's free. And you guys can use it and you should be using it. So we're going to teach you guys how to do that so you can attract oodles of qualified leads. We are also going to teach you a proven trust building strategy that's going to make your ideal clients want to buy what you sell, right? Trust is a big thing right now. It's a big thing. There's a lot of slime bags out there that are selling stuff that doesn't work, right? We're going to help you communicate the fact that you are indeed legit, you are trustworthy, your product or service is something they can depend on to get actual results in whatever they want, right? So we're going to teach you that strategy to, to create that. We're also going to help you build a plan that's going to strengthen your credibility and grow a community of raving fans who promote your business for you. Wouldn't that be nice to have tons of people promoting your business for you? Yeah, say yes. Yes, Stephanie, that would be nice, right? Go ahead and pop that in the chat. Yes, Stephanie, I want people promoting my business for me. Yep, I do, okay? We are also going to outline your marketing priorities. Because one thing I hear all the time from people is, I don't know what to do first. There's so many things I could do. I don't know what to do first. I don't, you know, I'm so overwhelmed. There's too many things, too many shiny objects. One person says I need to do this. The next person says I need to do that. And I'm just sitting over here pulling my hair out because all I want to do is do my business. All right. So we are going to outline your marketing priorities and determine what you need to dedicate your time and money to first so you can grow your business with confidence. Okay, now this is going to be for you specifically, not for everybody. Everyone is going to have a different answer to this. So we've got this really cool little assessment thing that we're going to walk you through and you're going to have that answer and that confidence so you can move forward. Here's my favorite part of the challenge. We are going to give you tons of templates, right? Who loves templates? If you love templates, say, I love templates, Stephanie. Okay, we are going to give you tons of templates because there is no reason for you guys to reinvent the wheel, right? We're gonna give you tools, we're gonna give you resources, we're gonna give you the things that you need to do to accomplish the five-day small business marketing challenge and really make marketing easier, right? Because 
I mean, am I right? Most people are pretty overwhelmed by marketing. It does not have to be as overwhelming as you may feel like it is, right? I want to show you a better way to market, a way that is not overwhelming on your mind, a way that is not overwhelming on your budget, a way that is not overwhelming on your staff, right? We want to break it down and make marketing doable and really do things that get you guys results and true growth. So the challenge is free. Again, it's October 25th through the 29th. It's going to be at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So if you're on the East Coast, 2 p.m., right? I'm going to need you for one hour every day, October 25th through the 29th. And we're going to give all of this away to you as a gift. It's amazing. Go to sizzleforceacademy.com forward slash challenge to save your spot. You cannot join that day, right? It's not, we're not just going live on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or whatever, right? You have to sign up ahead of time to save your spot. And then you will be invited into a private group, which is where we will go live. All right. So I hope you guys will join us again. A registration for that is open now. We will have to cut um we will have to cut off registration at some point because we're only allowed so many people to participate um, with the plan that we have <laughs> to go live and share this. Okay, so um, so don't wait is my message to you, right? And yes, am I playing into your FOMO? I sure am. I sure am right now, my friends. And you should do the same thing. All right, you guys, that is it for this week. I hope that was super helpful for you. Thank you for joining us. We will be back next week. And I'm excited about next week's live because it's not just going to be my face that you have to stare at. You're going to get to look at somebody else's face. My um, amazing, one of our amazing copywriters and content marketers is going to be joining me for this live. And we are going to talk about some good, good stuff. So come back and join us again next Wednesday at 11. For now, sign up for the free challenge. Save your spot before they're all gone. And I'll see you guys next week. See you later.